Hello everyone and welcome to the review of the famous ZU Guang T18 uh, You may say that, uh, hold on, this is not famous uh, Well, actually it is not But it's going to be after this review because this uh, pocket e-bike And look at my hand This is the motor and the wheel So it's a pocket bike It's tiny uh, this thing it's absolutely fabulous I have uh, run it already for a few days and the outcome is actually impressive uh, not to be fooled by its appearance as it looks like I have uh, stolen uh, the, the bike of my child and uh, run away with it uh, well it's not like that this thing is really really nice and I'm going to tell you why Now I'm going to talk a bit about the specifications for this uh, bike. So it comes with a motor that is rated somewhere between 250 watts and uh, 350 watts. And that's why because if you look in uh, this manual, uh, which has some interesting stuff uh, there, you can learn a few things about this bike. At the end of the manual here, it's a table with specifications. And there are two models, uh, standard type and a high edition type and actually none of uh, these two uh, actually is this model here because uh, the standard type comes with a 5 amp hour battery the other one comes with an 8 amp hour battery while my bike here comes with a 6 amp battery because I have uh, took it apart to check that and you can see this uh, picture of the battery and uh, uh, the motor power assumption is uh, based on a comparison with the Xiaomi M365 scooter that is rated for 200 watts continuous power and up to 500 watts when it goes uphill well this thing goes uphill uh, like a I don't know like a race car it simply doesn't have any kind of uh, issue going uphill while on the same a ramp where I go with my Xiaomi it will struggle to get there so this thing has a lot a lot of power and it's it accelerates very fast it has speed limit uh, it uh, limited to at around uh, uh, 30 kilometers per hour although in the manual is uh, yet again mislabeled as 25 kilometer per hour so I don't know what's wrong with the manual and the specifications but I'm telling you what this can do in a real life situation. In uh, the box with the bike you are going to get two keys and these are necessary for uh, assembling it. It comes with the rear mud guard taken off and you need both keys to lock it into position. And with this one also you can check some other screws to be sure that it's all tightened up and ready to run also the seat post is not inserted it's somewhere in the box but it only uses this quick screw here to uh, assemble it so absolutely no uh, problem it's very easy to do you don't need any kind of experience and of course it comes with a standard charger uh, 42 volts uh, 2 amps so this is a strict, uh, 36 volt system and of course when it's fully charged it's 42 volts and last but not least you get this really cool key uh, the label here is not included uh, but you can get one from here if you want to so you have this nice key lock here and after you insert the key you can turn this on otherwise it will not work it's completely dead you cannot do anything with it which is of course normal and if you power it on the so-called display will only show you the battery level so there's no speed indication nothing uh, which I actually don't like because it's a bit too simple and on this side here you get 
the lamps uh, switch for daylight and uh, front light and of course a horn which is decent for uh, uh, pedestrians but not for cars so if I turn on the light here you have this red LED and it also acts as a brake lamp when you brake it gets more powerful so in the front you get twin LEDs rather bright uh, not for uh, driving this uh, on uh, in the night but uh, it's very good for the traffic as uh, cars will observe you very easily right and the most important thing uh, you may actually ask what's with this ugly looking bag here and this ugly looking wire well that's my add-on to this pocket bike and uh, now I'm going to talk about the range the range in the manual is specified somewhere between 30 kilometers for the low-end version and up to something like 45 kilometers for the high-end version well with the 6 amp battery driven full speed always accelerating to maximum uh, never using uh, pedals for any kind of assistance so just in pure moped mode and as fast and as hard as I could accelerate and kept it full speed always I managed to get uh, around uh, 17 kilometers with it so ne uh, not 70 17 just 17 and it was not even 20 kilometers but after that I have uh, checked the tire pressure and both tires were uh, almost flat and after filling them uh, up to three atmospheres of pressure I have managed to get around 20 kilometers in the same hard conditions such as always full accelerating full speed and keeping it that way but I usually do uh, longer trips like 30 kilometers per day so I needed uh, more capacity and that was very easy because here it's a lithium-ion pack made by me and to connect this to the original electronics here it was a 10 minute job you only need a connector adapter from XT60 to a DINS connector if you know what a DINS connector looks like it was just solder to connectors and a wire and that was it 10 minutes job and now I have at least two times the range as this pack here has another 6 amps and with that 6 amps I've already did around 40 kilometers and I still had some battery left and it's impressive because it keeps the top speed always up to around 30 kilometers because the voltage sag is very low and you accelerate very hard so that's really nice there are some extra goodies with this bike and those are both front and rear disc brakes 140 millimeter discs which will stop you really nice and they came perfectly adjusted uh, I haven't had to do anything to them and they work absolutely amazing you also get this nice and comfortable seat it's not that type of sport seat where it simply destroys your butt this one is really nice if you sit here on the rear part of it it's actually cushions the impact and makes it a very soft and smooth ride while you also get an extra suspension here for the rear arm and that also works really nice in town where you have a lot of bumps it will soak them out you can also adjust its hardness so it's not uh, too bouncy or too hard you can adjust it to perfection and I really love that thing it makes it really nice to use it around right so now let's test ride it and because it doesn't have any kind of uh, way to show the speed I'm going to use my mobile phone and hopefully this is uh, recording the screen and I'm using GPS so that should be really accurate and I'm going to put the phone here hopefully it will not stop recording backpack on my back another five kilograms and on this camera probably will you are not going to observe but it's a steep hill and it's off-road and I'm not going to use the pedals let's see if this has enough power to get me up there so I'm going to use the this twist handle and 
it has a lot of power and it actually just jump from underneath me so I'm going to just put a bit of equilibrium into it and there you go this is the acceleration and brakes brakes are excellent you can use them both and because most of the weight is on the rear wheel you can use the front brake very hard it will not throw you away and the acceleration is really nice smooth and progressive so if you just twist it a bit it's very easy to take it for a slow spin relaxing ride nothing complicated very maneuverable also and if you twist it to the maximum it has a bit of delay and then and we need to get out of here I'm going to bus bypass this security all right and let's see what speed we can get on it right and that was probably the maximum you can get with it And now I'm going to try the assist mode, so I'm pedaling, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's easy, alright, oh, and now, oh, that's interesting, it's not progressive, it simply detects your effort and accelerates to maximum. that's really nice really really nice <coughs> and now I'm going to adjust this camera a bit something like that should be better and this one should be a bit more upward so you can actually see something else beside the bike now I'm going to talk to you with uh, about the accelerator and something really nice about it although it doesn't have cruise control which I don't like it has engine braking magnetic engine braking and that works very easy and it has two things different things it has coasting where it actually doesn't brake at all and it just stops the motor and lets you go as fast as possible going downhill it will not do anything and it has the second level the braking and that is adjusted by the lever itself by the grip so when you are going very fast if you want to go slow you are just going to release partially the throttle and as low as you can get with it as slower the bike will go but if you zero it it will just coast and then you are going to go faster so if you actually want to go slower and brake with the engine without using the brakes you just need to accelerate slow while going downhill makes sense doesn't it now let's be serious it's similar with a car so you release partially the accelerator the engine will go slower and it will give you engine braking it's exactly the same analogy here when you are releasing the throttle it will start to brake with the engine
and that was engine braking and I'm going to try to make another example of it so I'm going to get some speed and then not release the throttle but reduce the speed so full speed right and now I'm engine braking just like that so this was just with the accelerator and you might say well releasing the throttle will stop the motor and the drag of the motor will reduce the speed nope let's try the same thing but then I'm going to coast so full speed get and release and it's going and going and going and it's not slowing down so I need to actually brake I don't know if this will regenerate power uh, if it has kinetic recovery system or just magnetic braking but it's a nice feature to have and it will save you uh, the brakes from uh, all that maintenance you get by using them uh, very often And now it's time for the hill climb test so I'm very slow this hill is very steep the Xiaomi will only do around 15 6, 16 17 something kilometers per hour at most while others will go up to as slow as 10 or 8 kilometers per hour so this thing will accelerate on the top of the hill with no problem whatsoever it's also very very maneuverable It does stop speed right away. And now I'm coasting and getting more speed and I'm going to use the accelerator to reduce the power. And now let's do a bit of, let's call it off-road, but nothing serious, so on the grass is decent, but bumpy because of the small wheels on, on this uh, path, it's decent, but don't expect it to be smooth as butter, as the wheels are rather tiny, but if you are an adventurous type you can really use this on real heavy situations that motor really has a lot of grunt in it and 
it will get you up to speed in absolutely no time and let's try this oh and that's ah, most of what it can do and that's really really a nasty ramp so it will still be able to throw you what i don't like about the pedalex system is that because it has only one single gear here and you only get this crank set uh, when it gets around 20 kilometers per hour it's almost impossible to still be able to keep this working as now look at that it's simply spinning freely so motor is activated and this one will not be able to cope with all that speed so you simply cannot help the bike with the pedals at all so you get up to speed and then you need to hold your feet on that because otherwise you will fall trying just to match the speed with the motor and that's it's impossible so the pedal leg is really nice for another uh, reason uh, when you start from a stoplight or you go to uh, on a really high ramp you need a lot of power and that drains the battery very fast the motor has a lot of power but maybe you want to save some batteries so you can start from the stoplight using the pedals those will put the bike into motion it will save power and then the motor will just uh, keep on uh, giving you the speed and then you stop pedaling and using that it will save you a lot of battery and it will improve your uh, range a lot so a lot a lot of range will come from that so it's nice to have the pedals for that scope but not for using it a combination to save power on a long trip like 50 50 because you cannot set any kind of uh, assistance it doesn't have a torque sensor it just has a magnetic sensor there and it knows that you are spinning the pedals so it will give you full boosts and that's all and by using the motor braking system uh, you also have speed limit while going downhill so the bike will not go faster than around 30 kilometers per hour even on most descents but if you set it to coast so you zero the acceleration it will stop using the motor in any kind of way and you can actually get a bit of extra speed doing that but that's only for steep inclines otherwise holding the accelerator fully pressed on uh, going downhill it will limit the top speed at the same amount that you usually get on a flat terrain and that was some impressive stunt over there with this tiny bike uh, you only i have only managed to get uphill uh, with my large two motor scooters there uh, that uh, hill being also off-road it's very steep very very steep and you can observe that by the number of stairs that you need to go over and have a look of that it's a impressive ramp and uh, this tiny beast made it uphill with only just a few pedals on the most difficult part of it and almost threw me over again so the throwing over it's kind of annoying but 
it's okay you can manage with it and now it's time for some uh, pros and cons so you mainly have seen the most uh, pros this will accelerate really really fast it will go uphill it will go off-road without any kind of problem the motor has the enormous torque and it will get you out of trouble right away you can go uphill in a breeze absolutely no problem with that speed it's decent you get 25 30 kilometers per hour uh, very easy and it can hold that speed for a prolonged period of time and you can also use that uh, kind of pedal -like system to help you start faster from uh, standstill and save some uh, power if you want to so those are the pros oh and of course you can also fold this forgot to show you and uh, beside folding the pedals you can also fold the handlebar very sturdy system and very easy just like that and you can remove the seat post also and this thing will be really tiny and that's another big pro almost forgot to mention that and it's very simple to use you can only use one hand and there's no play there's no need to adjust this system it's very good and not like on the xiaomi it will not rattle over time so that's really nice and it will not break right so the cons the cons what i don't like is the fact that you don't have torque sensing so and with this gearing you can actually not use the pedals for going fast they are impossible to use the second con i don't like it the fact that of course being a pocket bike uh, it's very small and when you have the pedal in the lowest position if you drive this and you take an incline with it or a sharp turn like that you are going to probably hit the ground with the pedal so you need to take caution when you go fast you need to actually hold the pedals level something like that otherwise you are going to hit something with them and i also don't like this uh, so-called display with only a few colored bar graphs so you are full you are half you are almost empty because the uh, last two ones are almost dead battery and that's it they could have at least added a speed indicator or something like that so that is what i do not like about it and it doesn't have a cruise control so you only need to hold this and when you release it it will do its magic coast or brake so mm, when you are uh, riding it for uh, very long roads uh, sometimes you feel the need to release the throttle but I've gone over that I just twist it like that and then grab it with my hand and the spring is not very tight so you can hold it that way and I release it like that and I can brake so it could have been better to have uh, like on uh, DU bikes you have a small button here so you uh, press the throttle push the cruise and then release the throttle and it will hold it in that position electronically not mechanically and that would have been very, really nice this one doesn't have uh, some other pros uh, are the brakes which have magnetic sensors in them so they have motor inhibitors uh, really good when you are going fast if you uh, somehow keep the throttle pressed and touch the brake the motor will stop right away even if you do not release the throttle that's it's very good for safety and it works really nice forgot to mention that this is also very light and you can actually only grab it by this built-in handle and you only need one hand to hold it it's very easy it's under 20 kilograms uh, something like 17 18 uh, depending on the installed battery type you can actually balance it better from this rear part of the frame so if you put your hand underneath there you just grab it and you can go on stairs with it yeah. there's no problem and it actually feels lighter than it is and it's easy to transport as you can grab it better than a regular kick scooter
Until my next review, consider subscribing for more uh, related videos and bye bye!